Chapter 1 The old hands who have lived life behind the wire will know all about this, but if you ever do go inside for the first time, one of the ways to give yourself a good chance of coming out at the other end is to take on a position of responsibility. There are many opportunities. Red bands, as they are often known, are needed to supervise work in the kitchens, to run the library, to clean and maintain the visiting areas, to organise the laundry, and so on. The red band itself is usually worn on the upper arm, but the more creative types always find other ways to display it, and it can make a fetching headband for some. The red band positions are not advertised, and you cannot apply for them, at least not officially. They are in the gift of senior officers, and allocating them can be the subject of much discussion. Good red bands make the work of hard-pressed prison staff much easier, but if they place their trust in the wrong man, it can lead to disaster, and, what is worse still, disastrous headlines. That is why first-timers are often a good choice, especially if they are people who have had no experience of crime before their one and only serious mistake, the accountant with his hand in the till, or the teacher who decides to relive his university days with something more than the spliff after the weekend barbecue. These make ideal red bands because they have no connections to the tightly knit world of habitual criminals, and because they do not, by definition, think like criminals either. Red band positions offer opportunities which these innocents will not see. But the supply of educated first-timers is limited, and if none is available, then red bands will be offered to the second rank, to the experienced old-timer who has shown in the past that he can do the time without doing any more crime, one who knows and understands the system, and who will quickly get on with things, no training or supervision required. Lucky Everett was one of these. This was his third stretch, and he was thinking seriously about making it his last. He knew enough about motors to make a few bob to top up the benefits. It would never pay as well as the stolen red diesel business, but farm and commercial vehicle security was tightening up all the time, and the local Finland police had his card well and truly marked now. And another thing, he had felt the fear this time the fear of becoming institutionalised. The two-year sentence had been longer than expected, but when he came in through the automatic gates, there had been an odd sense of relief. No more worries for fifteen months or so, and within ten minutes of being on the landing, he had heard two voices call out, "'He is lucky!' and "'Not so lucky!' That first night they had shared some of their hooch with him, and he woke up with a hangover. It was like a home from home now, and he didn't want that. He didn't want to be one of the sad old lags who committed their next crime simply in order to get returned to the Nick, the only place they felt that they belonged. No, he didn't want that. He was better than that. 